Welcome to Example Instruments 8 Custom DSP Instruments. In this example, we will be looking at how to implement a custom instrument with its own processing kernel, its own signal processing. One disclaimer before we get going. Um, this example is actually quite lengthy. It implements multiple instruments like a snare drum and a kick drum and a hi-hat and a, and a multi-oscillator fat lead synth. Um, this would exceed the scope of this lesson to ex to go through all of this, to explain all of these, but the code is really well commented and um, make sure to also browse through the, um, each implementation of each custom instrument. Um, today, I'm only going to explain the basics of how to implement an instrument, a custom instrument, and only will will only implement one single instrument. But before we get going, let's have a quick look at the at the way that the Velen library actually produces sounds when the internal tone engine is used. So the um, I walk you through this uh, audio processing chain, um, and then we'll dive, in, dive into some actual source code. So what's actually happening on a hardware level, basically, is that there is some kind of audio device, whether it's a, a real physical sound card or whether it's a virtual sound card, um, this will this is some underlying infrastructure that actually produces the sound in your audio system in your computer. So um, we just call it the audio output. And um, what happens now is that every now and then this audio output requests a big block of sample data um, that it will require to play the data in that block sometime in the future. Um, so it can schedule it. So it requests an audio block, a block of sample data from the tone engine. Um, in this case, it's actually the um, internal tone engine, the one we are using most of the time here, um, in contrast to a media or OSC, which uses external devices. OK, so the internal tone engine is then asked to fill an audio block. The tone engine forwards this request um, for this audio block and asks the individual instruments and by default, there are 16 of those instruments, um, which you know from the prior, from the earlier examples. It asks each of these instruments for a single sample um, via the output method. So each instrument has somewhere in its inside, it has an output, output method that is supposed to return a float value, which is then its sample at that point in time. And the tone engine does this for all instruments and then combines them into um, into the single sample and then does this for every single entry in the audio block until the audio block is filled with sample data. So this happens actually um, quite a lot until the audio block is filled. And once the audio block is filled, the audio block is passed back to the audio output and the audio output will then accept this and play the content of the audio block um, at some point. Some later point actually. Um, it's not, not really defined and not really transparent when that actually happens, you know, sometime in the future. And once the audio output um, has played, most of the sample data will request the, the next audio block. So this is actually like, like, a, like a perpetual process, you know, audio output requests audio block from the tone engine, tone engine collects the sample data sample by sample from all 16 instruments, passes it back to the audio output and that sonifies the, the data then. Okay, so this is the, the audio processing chain in the Valen library. And as a matter of fact, this is actually quite a common way to um, generate sound in audio systems, whether it's on a, on, a, on a desktop computer like this one, or whether it is in a microcontroller environment or anywhere else. So, um, so this kind of notion of an audio block, which is then filled with sample data, and then passed back to the audio hardware to be sonified or played back, um, is quite a normal thing and um, the not the only thing, but quite a normal thing to produce sound, to do digital sound processing, signal slash sound processing. Okay, so let's jump into the code. How is this done in the Venn library? Um, I prepared a little bit of boiler code. So this is actually um, a sketch you have seen multiple times now. When I press the mouse, it plays a note, the tone on. And when I release the mouse, it uh, triggers note off. 
And what, what's actually happening here is um, since we don't define an instrument, it actually uses the default instrument. So instrument number, instrument one, so instrument zero I, with the ID zero actually. So the first instrument with the ID zero. And, um, and that is triggered by this tone note on method call. So, um, so we are now hearing the default instrument, which as you can also hear uses this very simple sine wave oscillator. So what, what our plan is now to create our own custom instrument with its own output method, which you might remember from the, from the schematic earlier, um, with its own output method that can generate its own kind of um, sample data once it's requested to deliver those from the tone engine. So this is done by, we have to set up a class. So we just call this custom instrument. And this is now um, important now. So this needs to um, extend the, the um, internal instrument, instrument internal. Okay. So this is the, this is the, the default uh, instrument, which is actually, um, if you, if you remember this, um, actually, um, uh, yeah, standard configuration, something, something, um, quite a, not, not sophisticated, but quite, um, capable, a combination of, a um, an oscillator and two low frequency oscillator an ADSR envelope to control the, the amplitude and a low pass filter. Um, so, so this is actually what's, what's all inside of this instrument. By the way, I really encourage you to have a look at the source code of this, um, of this um, instrument internal, because um, you can also, you know, learn a thing or two of how to in implement um, like this, 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 Convolute of components that are, that we were just looking at in the schematics. So um, maybe I'll just do this now in this tutorial here. So, for example, if we just um, scroll to the output method <coughs> here, this is actually an implementation of um, a combination of the LFO and the and the two LFOs and the uh, oscillator and the low pass filter and and um, it's actually quite straightforward, I think. Okay, so let's get back to the to our code. So what we, we can do is we take this existing instrument and um, extend um, this in our custom instrument class. And um, one thing that is necessary to do is that we need to um, we need to um, call the super constructor that is the constructor of this class. We need to call it um, with this idiom here. Um, let me just do it like this. So we, when we create our custom instrument, we need to give it an ID, and um, and then this is also um, necessary to call it in the super constructor. So um, so everything is like set up correctly. So if we do it like this, this is our most basic um, um, custom instrument. Actually, it's not that custom because it really just um, inherits all the functionality from the normal instrument internal. So, um, so but maybe uh, since there's no syntax error, you could run this code. It doesn't do anything yet. Um, it doesn't even use the custom instrument. Um, but maybe let's just have a quick look at, at how to how to actually replace um, one of our 16 default instruments with this custom instrument. So in order to um, to do this, we um, we have to replace the instrument with the tone dot replace instrument method, and there we need to pass a an instance of this instrument. So we can do it like this, and here we can have, we can write the, the the instrument ID, and since there's some kind of automatism running in the background here when you call this method, this number here actually also specifies the tone instrument that it will replace. So if we add a, add a zero here, this will actually replace the instrument that we um, get when we call instrument tone.instrument zero. Okay. 
So if we, um, if we would do it like this, this would actually um, replace the second instrument, which we could then control again with this idiom here. Okay, so uh, we just replace the first, the default instrument. Um, and um, and again, let's see, let's, let's run this and see if, if, if we can hear something or... Okay, so as I said, I didn't expect anything to happen because um, what we now need to do is we need to um, actually override, oh, well, we actually need to change some kind of, some of the functionality. So um, there, are, there are multiple things you could do um, to customize this instrument, but but the the um, probably the most common thing to do is to actually override this um, output method. If you recall the schematics, this is the method that is called by the tone um, engine whenever it needs to collect all the samples to pass them to the audio hardware. So um, this is actually where the the yeah the magic happens basically. So we're actually doing something here which doesn't make a lot of sense, but we are now um, we are now overriding the original output uh, method of instrument internal, which you know combined the oscillator and the filters and all these things, and we are just returning zero now. So um, which this would actually mean that we just get a mute. <laughs> instrument so if you run this and i press the mouse it's playing and all but it's we don't hear anything because all 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 the tone engine gets back from this instrument is zero okay so um so let's let's do something more um productive here maybe <clears throat> i think um the most simple thing to do is to create some kind of noisy, uh, noisy instrument because um, we can produce noise quite easily just with a random function. So um, let's let's just collect the sample here. So if we have a um, one sample and we create this from the noise uh, from the random function, we get um, we could use the full range of minus one to one, and that is actually quite loud, especially because noise appears much louder than, than say, a sine wave. So, um, like a full range noise is actually quite drastic. So let let me just um, you know reduce it to like twenty five percent of the the full range, so um, so it doesn't blow off my headphones or your ears or else so we are we're creating the sample here we just get like a random value between minus 25 and 25 and then we return this so whenever this output method is called it returns it's called it is called sorry um it will return like a random value between these two um in this value range here so this should now produce like a nasty sound So you hear the noise. I press play, but um, but um, the it, it registers that I play, press play and also um, or that I set note on and also note off. You can see this in the in the, the ellipse size changing, but it was a continuous uh, noise, and that is because we are not using the um, ADSR, which is actually usually um, responsible for you know like changing the amplitude over time if you remember so um that's something since we're extending this instrument and this instrument has an adsr we can um, actually just um, use the existing adsr it's defined in this instrument if you look at the source code you um let me just sneak peek into the into the source code yeah it's, it's dot output so we can, um, similarly to, to this instrument, also the ADSR has an output function, which actually does exactly the same. It returns a, um, a float value, only in this case, it's not a, it's not a bit of sample data, but it's, it's much rather a um, changing yeah, value over time, which is, in our case, our amplitude. So um, it starts at, starts at zero, raises up to one, and then you know decays um, slowly over time, if you remember. 
Um, and if we just take this value and multiply it with our um, random sample data, we now have, um, or the ADSR now has control over the, over the amplitude again, the volume again. And since we have control over the ADSR, we can now um, hopefully use these um, two methods, node on and off again. Okay, this sounds good. We don't hear anything and I press mouse now. So this is already, it's, it's nice. So I have like this, I don't know what it resembles, but some something a little bit percussive maybe. Um, and uh, maybe in order to, to make this a little bit more, um, well, resemble a real world example, we can actually go ahead and, and change the ADSR values a little bit. So uh, we can go, go like this so we make it like um very very punchy a very short attack so it's very percussive and then we um let it also decay rather quickly and then instead of um you know having it hold some kind of audible um value we just um set the sustain to zero so and what this actually does it kind of you know eliminates the last two stages of the of the ADSR, which actually means that this node off function becomes a little bit um, useless because what, what happens now when we press node on, the ADSR goes really quickly, the envelope goes really quickly through attack and then decay stage and then turns off again. So so this hopefully will sound something like a percussive, um, yeah, hi-hat, something like that instrument. And as I said, we are kind of skipping the last two stages. So even if I keep the mouse pressed, I still only get like this um, short, snappy, snappy sound. So that's actually it already. So this is this is um, the a way to um, implement a custom instrument. So again, like the the core thing is actually to override this. Um, to create a class that extends the one of the instrument internal or the instrument internal class and then we override the output method and here we can write um, samples ourselves and we can even use like the the components that are um, inst instantiated and used in instrument internal for example like the um, envelope the adsr envelope we could also use the oscillator and so on um, and then also important is to replace the um, one of the default instruments with our custom instrument. Okay, so this basically concludes our um, session here. Again, I really want to remind you to look at these other um, instruments as well. Um, some use like a bit maybe surprising techniques um, others are just like a combination of, of things you maybe know already or maybe understand already so um so it's actually um it's really worth looking at okay i hope you enjoyed this see you in the next one